Good afternoon, Faye Kemi. Um, Good afternoon. Thank you for sitting with us to talk today. Absolutely. All right. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Um, I'm a wife, a mother of two kids. I'm a passionate wedding and event planner and with a financial analysis um, consultant background. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Absolutely. Um, how did you get into wedding planning? Interesting. Um, I want to say that I've been a wedding planner all my life. Event planning has been embedded in who I am. And I say this because as far back as a little child, my mom told me that I'd been planning vacations and holidays for my brothers and I, including my family. And I would just be like, oh, let's go to Lagos. Then we're going to be there for two weeks and then we'll go here. So I've been planning all my life, but more recognizable time, I would say I got into event planning by just getting excited um, over little events that my friends are doing. Like if somebody was turning 30, 25, I would be like, oh my God, what is the theme? Do you want a color theme? Do you want an event theme? Um, so I want to say I've been planning all my life. Um, but when my daughter was going to turn one, I've been planning my first child. I've been planning what her one-year-old birthday party would look like okay. while I was like four or five months pregnant. Okay. And my daughter is 14. And so that's actually the yardstick that I go by as to when I really got into professional event planning. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so how exactly does a person become an uh, event or a wedding planner? You know, is, um, is there any school requirements that you have to uh, undertake? Does it come with learning from people? Do you have to get somebody to train you? How do you get into it? So that's quite interesting. Getting into event and wedding planning, honestly, for me, it's a passion project. Okay. So for me, it wasn't about schooling mm -hmm. or going to get in some type of prerequisite in college. I, I mean, my, my entire college life is completely different from being an event or wedding planner. Mm -hmm. I mean... I have an associate degree in computer information system. I have my bachelor's in um, computer tech, you know, uh, business administration. I have some MBA prep courses that I did in completely, literally business tech admin. So mm -hmm. it's completely different from um, event planning. Mm -hmm. However, I think everyone's journey into becoming an event planner or wedding planner is different. Mm -hmm. Should you go to school? Should you take courses? If that works for you, I say yes. Um, is there a an actual A, B, C, D? This is what you have to do to become an event or wedding planner? Mm -hmm. I'd say no. Okay. I'd say that you should totally go for it if you're extremely passionate about it. Okay. Wedding and event planning is not easy okay. and it doesn't look as glam behind the scenes as it looks on the scene right. and on the day of the event there's mm -hmm. a lot of things that go on okay. in between the one year the six months the year and a half two years of event or wedding planning um so i don't have an actual answer for you but one thing i know for sure is whether you go to school or whether you understudy someone or whether you have a mentor, be sure that you've gotten someone, be sure to have a mentor. Right. Be sure to watch a few companies that you like how they execute events or mm -hmm. weddings mm -hmm. and even reach out and see if you can shadow them on mm -hmm. actual days of events or a week leading into the event, like the right. week off. Okay experience is the best teacher so mm -hmm. you could go to school and learn all the theology you know the theories of planning events but executing and actually making it come to life and making it happen two different things um so whatever you do have a mentor have people that you look up to and shadow them i got you okay so in your opinion going to like a actual school is not necessary it is not okay. necessary okay I got um, you. yeah passion project you have to love people you have to love to help be, um, people okay. 
and wants to talk to loads of people because we talk to a lot of vendors, clients, mm -hmm. venues, you know, mm -hmm. and so you have to love those things in order to even think about event or wedding planning. So whether you go to school or not, mm -hmm. if you're not a people person, you're probably not going to do well. Got you, got you. Um, and of course, in this day of social media, I mean, you can learn from online. You could learn too, from right? online. You okay. could Google, you could YouTube. Okay. Um, you could actually watch people in action. For example, we at FTK Connect Events, we have a behind the scenes, which really is tied into our giving back to new and upcoming okay. event planners. Okay. Um, you know, because cool. I teach um, wedding planning, uh, becoming a wedding plan planner. Um, we have different courses on that as well. So we do Web by FTK, which is weddings, events, and beyond. Um, so we have that as a behind the scenes where you can watch us. We're on YouTube where, okay. you know, you could always Google search, um, not just us, but any planner. And honestly, you could go from there and become an event planner. Okay. There great. is no, you have yeah. to fit all these things in this box to okay. become an event planner. Got you. Got you. So, I mean, you do a lot of events, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I usually focus on weddings when I'm doing this, but you do everything. We right? do everything, everything. Um, but weddings is really like 95% of what we do. Perfect. People do events. People have started. People are, you know, small time mm -hmm. getting there. How does a person manage to move from the general scene into weddings? Because I know it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to give their wedding to somebody they can't trust. Mm -hmm. So what would you do to be able to maneuver your way into wedding planning? Weddings are a big deal because yeah. there is no do over. So okay. with events, mm -hmm. you know, you could turn 40, you could turn 45, you could turn 50. Yet. It's by the way, you know, not that it, it isn't as serious, mm -hmm. but majority of the wedding planning um, aspect of it, you got to be focused. There is no do over. It's a one day type of thing. So to really focus on that and to make maybe make a shift from event planning to wedding planning is what you're saying? Yes. I mean, is it easy? Is it luck? Is it, mm. you know, how does a person move from? Because I know people have been trying to get in there. They're not getting that much luck. So no is it connection? Is it what, how does a person manage? So for me, Mm -hmm. um, I'll use myself as a case study for okay. this particular one. I started off with events, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I always knew that I love love. I love love stories, and I felt even early on, because I've been doing this, it would be 14 years in December of mm -hmm. this year, that I've been that I've been a professional event planner. Um, so what I started to do was I started off as an event planner. No one knew me. Okay. Matter of fact, I dare say that no one knew me for six to seven years of my event planning journey. Mm -hmm. And so because I was doing events little by little and I started to build um, that interest in the wedding planning itself because mm -hmm. it's a huge production. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, you have to have the capacity to be able to do a bunch of things at the same time. So you have to be a huge multitasker. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to work about around different projects moving in different directions. So with a wedding planning um, um, service, you have to showcase yourself in the industry as someone who can be trusted. Okay. You also have to you have to connect with other vendors. That's how you get to be known. Right. Tap into, you know, social media, like you said, Google, YouTube, your area, and the top event planners that you continuously see their work. Look at the vendors they're working with. Mm -hmm. Align yourself with one of the vendors. Once you know one of them, the other person will introduce you to another. Our industry, the wedding planning industry, is a networking industry. Like once you know a photographer that's like somewhat popular or just known for taking great photos at weddings, mm -hmm. align yourself and be like, hey, maybe even volunteer your services and be like, hey, I've been doing events. I don't seem to get lucky to be known or I'm not getting as much jobs. Do you mind maybe as a videographer, maybe I should come cover one of your weddings or as an event planner, maybe I can align myself with the event planner that you're working with and come be her intern, mm -hmm. her coordinator for the day, and just 
volunteer your services to mm. people who are more tenured and who have been mm. in the industry before you right. because once you show yourself available and for example if you wanted to come to ftk connect events and help us out for the next one or two events i could say to you hey jody for example you know what i have a prospect event that i was told to be a part of but because we're already going to be in florida or we're going to be in mexico i don't mind sending the clients your way what do you think that's i'm going to remember you because you volunteered and you came right. to help and you came to shadow me so i would say being intentional um again it's a networking industry so once you know one person the other person will introduce you to the other person i wouldn't sometimes it could be luck but maybe five percent luck mm -hmm. But for real, you have to put in work. Mm -hmm. You have to know vendors who have been doing this for a while, who can connect you with the next vendors, who That's can true. recommend you to their own clients and okay. so on and so forth. And trust me, there are so many weddings happening. Everybody gets a turn. Mm -hmm. You can be that next person that you're looking at as, oh, David Tutera is huge, is big. You could be the next David Tutera. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Uh, generally, you know, like you said, it's a whole bunch of events you could do. Do you think the wedding industry is more lucrative in uh, relation to others? I think, so. I think so. I think that the wedding industry is vibrant. I feel like it's never going to go anywhere because people mm -hmm. fall in love and they get married. Mm -hmm. And um, in planning weddings, what I realize is I'm a therapist, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I'm everything, I'm my client's best friend. So it does spill over into other parts okay. of the industry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. That's an important question because mm -hmm. people want to know that. Also, um, how do you, or generally, how do people find gigs or jobs to do? How? Where is the avenue? The yeah. avenues, I want to say continuously put yourself out there. Okay. Um, whether it's a little event, whether it's an intimate event, whether it's an intimate wedding, whether it's an elopement, you planned it. Put it out there. Just know how to curate your weddings and events so that it's appealing to potentially new clients. Um, why are you a wedding planner and you don't have an Instagram page? It's the cheapest freest if there's if, if those are words right. to put yourself out there you right. know mm -hmm. get yourself aligned brand yourself properly make sure that your event planning or wedding planning name is the same across the board twitter instagram facebook google mm -hmm. youtube pinterest all the social media be visible and yeah, i think sure. you will start to get gigs plus if you did a great job with your small intimate even wedding Chances are your clients are going to they're going to refer you to the next to their friends. Perfect. Thank you very much for that Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Um, so we've talked about the good sides of it, all right? Mm -hmm. Are there any challenges in the business? Uh, cancellations, mm -hmm. lawsuits, irate customers, and how do you keep that from happening? Um, God, <laughs> <laughs> there is no way to keep mm -hmm. that from happening. The reality of life and what I said earlier is everyone sees the glam of wedding planning, mm -hmm. um, but there are so many challenges behind the scenes. Sometimes you start off the um, wedding planning journey on a great note, you're excited, your client is excited, and then they start to maybe sometimes even want beyond what their budget dictates, mm -hmm. and then you start to have a little bit of issue in communicating because they want this, they've told you this is what they want during consultation, and then they're pointing to that, and you know fully well that they cannot afford it. So it could be challenging, um, personally, um, in all our planning of events in the last 14 years, we have only been faced with one lawsuit. And to be quite honest, the customer was the client. It was a, a corporate event. The client actually retracted. They apologized. They were friends with them. We ended up three years later planning their sister's wedding. Fabulous, luxurious wedding. And if they're watching this, they know exactly who they are. <laughs> True life story. I have their hashtag. One of the most luxurious wedding we planned in Virginia. Um, so they filed a lawsuit, but then they retracted it and apologized because 
it was just a thing of a small corporate event. So you cannot avoid challenges. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, challenges make you smarter, make mm -hmm. you wiser, make you understand the industry better because then you're like, oh my God, I got to do my research. What did I do? What, you know, how should my contract, what should it say? So yeah, challenges make you stronger. It makes you better. Okay. Can't avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean, but the next question, you've spoken on it in some way or some form. Okay. But what's the expectation before you get into the business? And what is in there that people don't know? What is in the business that people looking from the outside uh, don't know? People looking from the outside, especially if you're not in the wedding industry, always think that wedding planning is glam and oh my God, that planner looks great. She's fashionable and she's putting together all these amazing events. But the truth of the matter is behind the scenes, in the kitchen, cooking in the kitchen is always a mess. There's so many moving parts to wedding planning all at the same time that people don't realize the magnitude of logistics and work, <laughs> real work that it takes. One of my pet peeves actually is people thinking event planning is so just so bougie that <laughs> people don't do work and they don't even consider wedding planners and event planners a real job. It's a full-time job. I quit my job about eight years ago to do wedding and event planning. I was working for a Fortune 500 company. They're still thriving and doing great. I was a financial consultant. I had a nine to five job. I was in corporate America, but I was extremely passionate about what I did and I could not mesh both successfully and be a mother and be a wife. And I also volunteer in my church. Like I'm very, very active in church. So from the outside looking in, you're like, oh, look at them. They're so glam. They're so bougie. Oh, it's luxury. No. Wedding planning actually I think is no longer a luxury ask. I think that every single couple should invest in getting a wedding and event planner and get professional videographers, photographers, and all of these people because they make your wedding memorable. Exactly. Thank you very much for that. Absolutely. Um, and let's make it our in, way into this. How do you think it has shaped your life, if any, in any way? Oh my God. This is my God-ordained work. Mm -hmm. I cannot be doing anything else. Every time I lay down to rest, I'm like, what else could I possibly be, ever do? aside from this. Like I loved the corporate jobs that I've held. I've worked in a bank, you know, I've been a tax preparer. Funny enough, nobody believes that, but I did that for like four or five years. And my longest holding job was as a financial analyst and consultant um, for an amazing company um, that I worked for almost 10 years. So I've been in the corporate America for a while, but there is absolutely nothing else that I could be doing on the planet, on the, on the, on the, on this planet, other than wedding and event planning. I truly love my job. I feel like it's been a blessing in my life. I feel like my purpose in life is continuously being fulfilled as a wedding and event planner. So, I mean, it's what I love. It's what I do. I feel extremely fulfilled as a mother, as a worker in my church. It's completely aligned to helping people and I enjoy like I thoroughly enjoy mm -hmm. planning events. It gets me excited. Okay. And um, how do you, how are you inspired to continue? What inspires you? What keeps you going? And how do you improve upon your skills? Improving upon your skills is like number one for me. It is a major deal um, because you could be doing the same thing over and over again and it just seems old. And because I love challenges, I'm always seeking to know better. Mm -hmm. So for me, I get inspired by the new trends in the industry. Okay. I get inspired by even building upon the new trends in the industry. So okay. I could see something that was done in Singapore. I could see something that was done in Africa, like in Nigeria or Ghana or Cameroon. And I'm mm. like, you know what? They did that. We're about mm. to do this, you okay. know? So I continuously get inspired by love, by people who, um, you know, fall in love and get creative, cre get creative with how they propose. <sighs> the little minute things around me inspire me. Okay. Um, but the one thing that I am, I am, I have resolved in myself to do is to continuously learn. Okay. Um, yeah, I've been in this industry for a while, but it continues to evolve and I'm so happy 
that my team and I continue to involve with the current trends and right. you know things okay. that just inspire us. Thank you very, very, very much. Absolutely. Um, we're getting to the end of this now. Yay. Um, do you? Um, you've spoken so much on how you how you love what you're doing, and so this question might be irrelevant. Okay. But I ask you: um, Do you wish you had done anything differently throughout the journey till today? when you started off, uh, anything you should wish you did earlier or later, or anything you changed? Funny enough, I remember when I first started and I did a couple of weddings. I started off with events, 10-year-old mm. birthday party, sweet 16, and I remember my first major wedding, or the second one, I cried like a baby, mm. I cried. But looking back at it, everything that I went through, not knowing, just trying to figure my way out and maneuver through the wedding industry, made me who I am today. I am resilient. You cannot throw anything in front of me and it will throw me off. I've seen so many things in the wedding industry and I continue to say, every time I think I've seen everything, Something happens and I'm like, whoa, in 14 years, I haven't seen everything. So for me, I wouldn't change anything because those things have shaped me into this seemingly almost because I don't think that there is always a point where you're successful wedding and event planner and you should not relax because I'm continuously always looking to better myself, mm -hmm. always look to look, always looking to better my team. So I would never call myself a made it <laughs> successful wedding planner. But honestly, it has shaped me into this resilience, this amazing, awesome wedding planning um, boutique that we have now. Um, so I, I don't think that I would change anything. I think I would actually would have encouraged my stupidity when I started. I started young and dumb, um, but it was great because I was so heavily branded when I started and everybody was like, well, who is she? Who does she think she is? You know, right. but it's really shaped me into the person that I am today. Okay. So I'm very thankful. Okay. Now let me throw this your way. You have this uh, Valentine's thing that you do, Valentine's Day thing that you do. Yeah. What is that about? Um, so we thought of, it's also interesting because it was part of the things that we wanted to do not to be relaxed and feel like, oh, we know it all. We always want, I started to think, let's create something that we could challenge ourselves with yearly to up our game in the industry. Mm -hmm. And we all know that, you know, the spring is usually, well, winter, spring is usually a slower wedding mm -hmm. and event planning period in the United States, at least in the part of town that we're in, mm -hmm. in the DMV. So I started to think, instead of waiting to plan all these events, which we immediately start with events and weddings like in March, why don't we come up with something, you know, and I told you, I love love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we started to plan this Valentine event that we have now planned six years in a row. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we just look for themes around the Bond, the James Bond theme. I really love James Bond. I call myself Jane Bond. <laughs> Not really, but I call myself that. <laughs> So we do different adventures on the James Bond theme. We spin it off every year. Um, we put together an almost perfect curated event for lovers, be it a wedding, I'm sorry, I'm always thinking wedding, be it um, lovers, be it uh, married, single, dating, engaged, every type of love we bring together mm. in February and it's usually around Valentine's Day mm. and we just celebrate love. We curate perfect, I want to say perfect, um, but yeah, it's something that we used to challenge ourselves and we bring people together and it's always been a hit every single year. It's called a bond with me 007, but there are different themes every year. Good. In my opinion, they always look great. Thank, thank you. you so You've been a part of it before I too. Have. Yes, I have. So definitely yes. appreciate you. No problem. Thank you. A um, couple more questions to go. How has the COVID affected uh, business for you or in general? What do you think? See, I'm going to be one of the people who you wouldn't believe what I'm saying, but COVID in a way kind of was a blessing. Okay. Um, it helped us to slow down a little bit. It helped us to reevaluate how we do things behind the scenes. And yes, we weren't churning out events after event like mm -hmm. we normally do, but it helped us re 
rebrand behind the scenes. Okay. We rebranded our website, we actually rebranded our workflow and how we do our intake of clients and how we plan events and weddings. So one way or the other, it slowed us down. We did events during COVID. We did more, you know, very small, intimate events. Um, yeah, so, but for me, COVID was bad. It is bad. I hate it. I don't want to wear a mask. Right. It's crazy. But it was a blessing in disguise. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And the last and final question. Um, hey. <laughs> I know that uh, you've done a lot. You have a lot of experience. And if I were in the industry, uh, trying to get in the industry, I definitely want to shadow and learn from you. Uh, so you. with your wealth of experience, what would you say to a youngster or perhaps an adult who is trying to find their way into this business um, to be successful? What would you personally say to them? Personally, I would say if you are passionate about what you love, stick with it. Mm -hmm. Completely stick with it. There are no rules. There are no, again, boxes that you have to fill in and do all of these things. Find someone that you love how they plan their events. Find someone you love how, they, how their company, how their branding and how everything works. My advice to you is if you truly love it and you love people and you want to help i call it a ministry wedding and event planning the industry is a ministry because there are many wealthy and doing very well planners who would come down to their feet on the day of the wedding and they're literally wearing shoes for the bride um holding your train and doing all the odd and dirty jobs because we look beyond ourselves. Our happiness is to make you happy. It's to ensure that your day flows seamlessly. So if you're not that person, don't even go into the wedding industry. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I see videographers, they're like, something's about to tilt over. They're like, they're saving the day. You know, a photographer doubles up as a pastor. You know, we do all types of things just to make sure that our weddings and events are success are a success. Mm -hmm. So if you are passionate about people and are passionate about helping people and you're in the ministry of wedding industry, please shadow someone, please go for it. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, find someone, find a mentor. That's the number one thing. Find a mentor, shadow them and go for it. Don't let anyone or anything stop you, no matter how small you're starting. Even if you're planning a 10 people event, start somewhere and move. Wishing and hoping doesn't get you anywhere. You just got to do it. It will be discouraging at times. It would feel like, oh my God, no one is even noticing what I'm doing. Just continue to do it. The people that are watching, they're watching. They want to make sure that you're consistent. Mm -hmm. They're watching you. So just do it. Mm -hmm. Like Nike, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much for Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm sure this information will speak to somebody and uh, move so. somebody to the next level of their life. I hope Thank so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jojo. You are absolutely amazing thank, thank you. you for doing yeah. this yeah every time i talk about things like this it gets me extra passionate about what Perfect. i'm doing and i always always love to help others so i really hope it does help people mm -hmm. you're helping me and i'm helping other people and we're both helping people so Perfect. hey amen thank to you. that